So let's now speak to Daniel Azzi, a researcher at Harvard University in the United States, designing a political and economic reform program for Lebanon, joins us via Skype from Boston. So we've now heard from a number of political leaders, including today the President Michel Aoun. One thing uh, that they all seem to, to agree on is that they are sympathetic to the protesters' demands, but none of the concessions they're willing to make are, are satisfactory to the protesters. So are we now then at deadlock? Um, I think it's too early to say we're at deadlock. I mean, there's no question that the that the protests have generated some positive momentum in the country. The government has been stuck trying to come up with a with an economic plan for over a year, and as a result of the protests, a direct result, suddenly they were able to come up with a plan, a I would call it a barely adequate plan, uh, in a very very short time. So it's a very very good start. Um, I think they have a lot more to go. There are, frankly, too many ministers, uh, some of whom are very, very good, but there are others that just simply fill spots to represent their tribe or their sect or what have you, and they don't have any uh, um, practical function to help the country. But is that likely to change? I think it is likely to change. I think it's it's there's a high probability that there will be a response to the protesters with a change in government, probably with a formation of a of what what, what they call a technocrat or a specialized uh, uh, a government of ministers. Uh, the only the only challenge really is uh, if that is enough, if that is satisfactory to the protesters. The problem is that success begets success. So as a result, how far are they willing to go? The problem is there is a uh, there's a lot of positive momentum for what they're doing and and change, but if they push too far, then then you get into a, a, a huge danger zone. Plus, time is of the essence. I mean, time is not on the side of any of, of, of any of the whole country because of the because of the dangers lurking due to the you know the monetary uh, uh, crisis that is unfolding. But the kind of change in reform the protesters are calling for surely involves the current political establishment relinquishing their privileges, their access to state finances. Are they willing to do that? Um, I mean, I think they are willing to do that. They have taken some steps. The problem is much deeper, though. They, we have there's like three components of this thing. You've got the first component is the corruption and uh, and the the theft and the waste that has plagued the country for decades. Uh, that is one component, and that's a long-term problem to solve. Then you've got the dysfunctional economy, which has become really a uh, an economy based on importing uh, products from outside and uh, and funded by dollars that come in from expats, from tourists, and from uh, FDI, and that is no longer sufficient to fund the Lebanese economy like it did in the past. So that is a crisis that is happening uh, immediately. And finally, the, the the we need to repair the economy in the long term, make it produce things that people want to buy, whether it's manufacturing or whether it's some type of digital or media, you know, selling uh, zeros and ones to the rest of the world. Just very quickly, if we do see economic collapse in Lebanon, does that just how's that going to affect the protest movement? Um, I, I'm not a fan of using the word economic collapse. I mean, we have to really. Uh, we have to define what we mean by that. The fact of the matter is that we have a debt problem in Lebanon. That's really what it is. And then when you analyze where the debt is, really the debt, other than about five billion and change, the debt is all internal. It's basically what we did in this whole thing. We funded the lifestyle, sort of like somebody spending money on his credit card, uh, using people's deposits in the banks. And you know, sooner or later, we, we have to come to terms of what that means in terms of solving the problem. And what that really entails is having a discussion with, uh, with the different people affected about how to, how to resolve that problem. And to be honest with you, the, the problem doesn't involve a lot of people. You've got 0.8% of depositors, something like 23, 24,000 accounts. Let's assume about three or four per person. So you're talking about 6,000 people with $90 billion in these accounts. So these guys have generated this phantom uh, interest over the last uh, 10 years, 10, 12%, especially since 2016. And uh, you know, at some point, we're going to have to have a, a serious discussion with them in terms of uh, is this interest uh, earned or not earned. 
political and economic challenges lying ahead. Thank you very much, Daniel Azzi, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for having me. Have a nice evening.